Sponsorship for On the Record provided by PSENG, committed to serving customers, strengthening the business community, and investing in New Jersey's future. With major funding provided by the Fuel Merchants Association of New Jersey and the National Oil Heat Research Alliance, committed to saving energy and the environment. Today's oil heat, intelligent warmth for your home. New Jersey Carpenter Contractor Trust. When you need carpenters and contractors work, New Jersey works. Online at buildnj.net. Promotional support provided by New Jersey Business Magazine, the magazine of the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. Reporting business news for more than 50 years, reaching over 28,000 businesses statewide. Additional funding for this special taping provided by Princeton Public Affairs Group, Winning Strategies Washington, Allstate New Jersey Insurance Company, Enterprise, Impact Instrumentation Incorporated, New Jersey Restaurant Association, and NW Financial Group. Welcome to a special post-election edition of On the Record. We're in front of an audience in New Brunswick hosted by Princeton Public Affairs Group and Winning Strategies Washington. With us to reflect on Tuesday's voting are Congressman Bill Pascrell, Democrat of Patterson, Congressman Scott Garrett, Republican of Wantage, Sussex, Sussex County, Assemblyman John Wisniewski of Sayreville, the Democratic State Chairman, and State Senator Kevin O'Toole of Essex County. Let's start with the national picture and then go to New Jersey. Congressman Pascrell, uh, was your party's loss of 61 House seats uh, more about disillusionment with Obama or frustration at the economic stagnation of the country? Probably both. I think that uh, when you raise expectations in a, a time when this is not this wasn't just down, downturn in the economy. This is uh, us close to the, the edge, as uh, Secretary, former Secretary Paulson pointed out when he walked into the room and told us uh, we're about to have a world depression. And if we don't do something about this, a lot, a lot of people felt that uh, it was under the Obama administration that we passed TARP and the bailout. It was under the former administration. But so many things were distorted in this election. But I think it was higher expectations than we should have had, uh, and I just saw in the newspaper today, uh, we actually had an increase of 151,000 jobs last month. You need 175 to 200,000 jobs every month just to keep up with those folks coming into the, uh, the work sector. Uh, I think he was treated unfairly, although I think the expectations were too high. Secondly, uh, I think that, that we made a lot of mistakes ourselves. I think communicating what was accomplished. The best communicator that came out of this campaign was Michelle Obama. She put precisely what her husband had done, and his, her husband couldn't be precise. So people couldn't figure out what the hell the message was. So on both counts, I think we, we saw uh, uh, higher expectations than we should have had. Second of all, the president couldn't communicate what his own accomplishments were. Congressman Garrett, uh, Obama, the economy, both? No, more, the, uh, more uh, Obama and uh, what his goals were and what he actually did over the last two years. In fact, that's just not me saying that. That's what um, election night polling shows. Polling shows is that the voters went and voted this time more against something than for something. Polling shows that voters voted against this administration more than they did back when uh, Bush was in office and, they back in, uh, and the, the Democrats took the majority. I think it was like 40 some odd people going to, 40 percent of the public going to the public polls saying that they were voting against this administration and they were using um, that vote against President Obama, his agenda of picking winners and losers, his agenda of passing a health care bill without listening to the American public, his agenda of passing stimulus bills that uh, for $800 billion when he didn't have the money, it didn't turn into what he said it was going to turn into, so, and cap and trade in the House and so on and so forth. All those bills is what they were voting against, his agenda. And I don't think it has anything to do whatsoever with what the administration says. Gee, he just didn't put enough a spin on it. Gee, if President Obama just got out of the White House just a few more days and was on TV and was able to convey this message. Because if you think about it, over the last couple of years, we have seen this president go on TV and go out to the public more, I think, than any other uh, 
president. And I guess the last point on it is that the macro issue is, is on the spending. You know, just talking to Kevin here just before we went on the air, and I said, well, at, le at least you guys, um, in a bipartisan manner, too, on the state level, was able to, A, come up with a budget, and B, come up with a balanced budget. And maybe it's not what everybody wanted, but you were able to do it. In Washington, this is the first time since 1974 that the House did not even pass a budget. Um, and of course, as far as spending, it is just totally out of control. Senator O'Toole, how do you see President Obama? Uh, some say he's a centrist, some say he's a socialist. How do you see him? It doesn't matter how I see him, I think how the people of uh, the United States see him. I've heard this, this choice, you say, whether it's a disillusionment with Obama or frustration. I think there's three parts. The third option is maybe the Republicans have a better vision for what the federal government should do and shouldn't do. And I think from the polls that I have seen, the reaction I've seen across the country, is people are very frustrated that the, whether it's health care by Obama or whether it's the bailout or whether it's you know his way or the highway, it appeared to me, I heard Congressman Pascoe allude to it, um, they kind of set, set a certain bar and expectation and it wasn't met. In our day and age, you know, I'm 46 years old, we saw 61 seats change hands. We've never seen that in our lifetime. You've seen seven governors. You've seen six U.S. senators change hands. You've never seen that. It's unprecedented. You go back to the 1930s before you see that change. And you can't say, as, uh, as the president said, well, the people of the United States are confused. They're not confused. They know what they want. They don't want what's been provided to them for the last two years. Did you say that President Obama is too much his way or the highway? I think that's what, that, that's, that's what some would say about the New Jersey governor who's uh, doing fairly well. So we are we talking federal or state? Well, you can mix, we can mix them too. Okay, so we'll get to that later. I, we thought, I thought you said earlier in the well, program well, we're well, talking about federal. I couldn't help but think about so when you said his way or the highway. Let's, let's talk about that. Well, the difference is you have Governor Christie who's working with uh, Democrat-controlled houses in the Senate and the Assembly, and as Congressman uh, Garrett suggested, that there was a bipartisan approach uh, this year to get past the budget. I didn't see that in, in Congress. I didn't see that in D.C., a bipartisan approach. We How do you to respond to these you, you, you can, but let me just get uh, everybody I, I in the first round. Yet. <laughs> John Wisniewski, uh, how, how, do you, how do you see this uh, disastrous result for your party nationally? Well, I, I think you have to put it also in a historical context. Since 1860, the midterm election of a new president, his party loses seats in the House of Representatives, with three exceptions since 1860. So the historical precedent is that this is to be expected. This happens as a reaction to a new president coming in with his agenda, trying to change things that he'd like to change as president. This is what happens. But also, uh, we have a national, we have a worldwide economic downturn. Uh, and the, the, the notion that we can turn not just the United States' economy around, but the world's economy around in two years is, is really you know, something that lots of people running for office try to sell. You know, it's been two years and we don't have a full recovery. It must be the president's fault. The reality is, is it's been two years and we had a worldwide downturn because of the eight years of the Bush administration and the policies of Do you see Obama did. as a centrist or as a liberal? I see Obama as a centrist. Um, Will the Republicans in Congress, who now control the House, will they compromise with Obama over the next two years? They should. Let, let's get Scott Garrett on that first. Well, we will certainly try to extend a hand, um, which was never done to us um, when we started out. I, I remember to the day when President Obama came to the GOP conference, right when he was sworn in, the first day in session, he came over to the GOP conference, spoke to all of us, had microphones set up in the room, and he, he gave his little pitch, he said he wanted to work with us, and then a number of our members went to the microphones and says, well, President Obama, we would like to do this on this issue, here's an idea. And someone else would stand up, well, here's another idea on health care. Somebody else would say, well, here's something else on transportation. And to a man, every time someone of our side had an idea, an alternative, what have you, he would say, well, you know, that's just a bridge too far. Or, you know, I know where you're coming from, but I just can't go there. And, I, you know, I see what you're saying on this one, but we'll just have to agree to disagree. So he basically began his administration by saying, we won, and we want to work with you on the one hand, but he said, we won, and at any time we that asked the proposal. sounds like his way or the highway. Yeah, you that's basically that? what I would say it was. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 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 nothing, what about that? Nothing could be further from the truth. You have amnesia about what happened between 2001 yeah, I, and I 2008. Was, I was there on the and floor. The last debate I was in with my opponent, he talked about what the story was in 2000, before 2001. Then he skipped to the Obama administration. There were eight years there that are pretty significant because you had two tax cuts and you didn't pay for either one of them. 
You had two wars, and you didn't pay for either one of them. And you had a, a prescription drug bill, which you didn't vote for, your party supported, which I, I, wasn't paid for either. I didn't vote for that. But, uh, you know, I whispered in your ear, but you know, you do what you want to do, but you didn't pay for it. So when you bring that four to, you know, to 2009, uh, and, and, and put it in context. Put it in context. We had a worldwide situation that was going on. And the day and the month that he raised his hand, we lost 750,000 jobs. In fact, for that quarter, we lost 2 million jobs. You took it out of context. In fact, I would say that you guys and gals have been the obstructionists. Because right, the president yeah, reached out to you. The we'll, president reached out to you, and you were given orders. I read it in the, the Wall Street Journal. It must be true. Uh, you reached out to you and, you, and, and your leader said, the guy, that gentleman that's going to become the Speaker of the House, looks like, he said, we don't agree with anything. We go over there and listen. Let's get an don't. answer to that, and then, let's turn to New Jer and then let's turn to New Jersey election results. What's the, the party of no, that's what they sometimes say about the House Republicans or even the Senate Republicans. So, so I was on the floor the day that uh, President Obama gave his first talk with regard to health care, joint session of Congress. He's up there in the speaker. He comes down, as you probably see on TV, you know, he comes down the middle aisle right after that and shakes a lot of hands. So he comes down the aisle. I hand to him, this is, goes back a year and a half ago, a document, 24 pages long. It was all the Republican ideas, bills, legislation, and ideas on health care. And I said, Mr. President, I appreciate the fact that you want to work with us. Well, here's a booklet, basically, of all of our ideas. Please either you give me a call or um, somebody else from your office give me a call. Fortunately, he smiled and said, absolutely. Fortunately, there was not a garbage can when he left here, so he didn't throw it in then. But for the last year and a half, he never called. No one from the administration ever called. We still intended and did push for a number of uh, proposals on health care. We proposed a hundred different amendments. Are you going to work quickly? Are you going to work? Are you going to work with him for the next two years? We will, quickly. We will work with him. So, but we will never compromise on principle. But as long as he is willing to listen to what the American public says that they do not want health care, they do not want spending, we're willing to work with them. Their, their, their incoming leadership has said they're going to work with him. They're going to work with him to ensure his defeat in two years. That's not working with. Let's, that's, that's just taking a hard partisan position let, let's and saying, let's use the next two years of legislative time to make sure that we make the president look bad. That's not cooperation. Let's shift to New Jersey. Uh, Kevin O'Toole, uh, did the Republicans have a good night Tuesday night? Extraordinary night. Extraordinary night. So? Well, let's talk about Bergen County. You won. You defeated a two-term county executive, uh, underfunded two to one. Uh, Kathy Donovan, uh, three freeholders, a sheriff candidate. Uh, there's, uh, we picked up support. Caldwell, you picked up, uh, haven't won council seats in Livingston in 15, 20 years. Gloucester, two freeholders. Across the board, with the exception of District 14, the Republicans had an exceptional night. Won a congressional seat in District 3 did not win in 6 or 12. In terms of um, the congressional, you're talking about? It, yes. Well, listen, for those of us that you know understand the political wins, I think there was a uh, understanding that 6 and 12 were difficult uphill battles. I don't think anybody here would say with a straight face that they were the favorites going in, the uh, Republican challengers. I don't think uh, the, the state chair or the congressman would suggest that the uh, Republicans were the favorites in those two races. Were the Republicans the favorites in the third district, the Runyon Adler race? Uh, again, going back, I guess, 100 years, it's been held by a, a Republican. There was an understanding that, that there's a Republican base there. And I think that uh, I'm not surprised that the congressman elect Runyon won. Did, uh, John Wisniewski, did the Democrats have a we had, we had, no, we had better than a decent night. We had an excellent night. Four legislative seats up. We won, including Linda Greenstein, where she almost won Hamilton Township, a town that everybody was saying she'd lose. She won by eight points in a district that's been held by a Republican for 20 years. The other three districts were completely safe Democrats. They were safe Democratic seats. districts. Middlesex Freeholders, Union County Freeholders. Uh, you know, we won Holt and uh, Pallone. Uh, those were districts that uh, the weekend before, the governor was talking about how they were going to take those districts. The governor said the 14th legislature legislative district was his number one priority in the state. Again, a failure for the governor's party and a failure for his... He now uh, says that the Runyon-Adler race was the, no, was the most important race. I guess, I guess he gets to choose after let's, the result. It's kind of like betting race. on the horse race after yeah, it's the over. The, Senate, the yeah. Senate race in 14, let's look at that. And I congratulate uh, uh, Senator-elect uh, Linda Greenstein. She's run in that district 10 times. 
95, 97, 99, you go up through 2009. She spent millions of dollars. She's got extraordinary name recognition, as did Senator Inverso and Senator Barone before her. She has spent, you know, probably 10 to 1 over, over Tom Goodwin, who was, in, who was the interim senator there for seven or eight months. I mean, am I upset, disappointed? Absolutely. But the numbers are the numbers. It is two and a half to one Democrat and Republican. So did I hope that Tom was going to win? Absolutely. Are we shocked that she won after having planted a presence there for 10 years? Does it have anything, to, it have anything to do with the number of public employees in that district and the, the Republican posture toward public employees? Well, listen, even in this year's race, uh,